Cote. It is now time for question period. The Leader of Her Majesty's Loyal Opposition. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. My question is uh, for the Premier. Last Thursday, we learned that the uh, Sudbury Police Services uh, Board has contacted the Ontario Civilian Police Commission to seek guidance. Premier, we've asked the Commission for an investigation into the alleged bribery. Shouldn't you be doing the same? Shouldn't you be asking the Ontario Civilian Police Commission to conduct an investigation into the actions of Jerry Lougheed, Jr.? Premier, why have you fallen silent on Mr. Lougheed's inappropriate behaviour and alleged bribery? Well, Mr. Speaker, as I have said many times in this House, there is an investigation ongoing. It is uh, an investigation that's taking place outside of this House. And, Mr. Speaker, I would say to the member opposite that the Police Services Board is responsible for uh, the provision of adequate and effective police services in their municipalities, Mr. Speaker. And police services boards are not directed by me or by this House, Mr. Speaker. So um, we we need to let the Police Services Board take actions as it sees fit, and we let we need to let the investigation unfold uh, outside this legislature, which is where, it, uh, where it's appropriate, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. And to the uh, Premier, Mr. Speaker. The Ontario Civilian Police Commission has said that all police service board members have an obligation to respect and uphold the law. Jerry Lougheed, Jr. has not apparently lived up to his obligations as chair of the Sudbury Police Services Board. I think many of us, all of us, can agree with that. So much so that his colleagues on the board are now distancing themselves from him. And unlike the Premier, they don't want to be dragged down with him when he falls. So, Premier, by order in council, you have the power to revoke Mr. Lougheed's appointment. Order, so why please. won't you remove him from the Sudbury Police Services Board until the OPP investigations are completed? Okay. Well, Mr. Speaker, unlike the uh, member opposite, I actually trust the system. I trust the people who are part of the Police Services Board, Mr. Speaker. I trust the people who are uh, undertaking the investigation that is taking place outside of this House, Mr. Speaker. And uh, you know, I would just go back to that initial comment. I think it's very important that we trust the people who have been put in positions, who have uh, who have responsibilities, Mr. Speaker, that are not directed by the politics of what goes on in this House. Those investigations are happening outside. The Police Services Board will make its decision based, on, uh, based on its. Uh, very uh, good capacity to do so, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Final supplementary. And to the Premier. Premier, the Commission has said board members should act with the highest levels of honesty and integrity. It should not take criminal charges or convictions to prove Mr. Lougheed Jr. fell below that standard, Premier. It simply takes listening to Mr. Olivier's recordings. So when will you demonstrate integrity and remove Mr. Lougheed Jr. from the board? Premier. Attorney General. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Police Service Board is duty police service board generally determine objective and priority with respect to police service in their jurisdiction so uh, about the question that was uh, raised by the uh, leader of the opposition i understand question? that the uh, sudbury police service board has discussed this matter and have contacted the ontario civilian police commission so uh, they share their funding and uh, the uh, ocpc share their finding and comments uh, from from uh, community and the OCPC is authorized under Section 25 of the Police Service uh, Act to investigate, Answer. inquire into, and report on the conduct of a member of the Police Service Board if Thank you. Uh, requested. Thank you very much. Thank you. No question. Again, the Premier, the opposition. Speaker, Premier, over and over again, you have claimed that the investigation of Jerry Lawhood Jr. and Pat Sabero was independent and not taking place in this House, and you've said it again today a couple of times. Yet, when asked about possible OPP charges against Pat Sabera, on at least four, five occasions now, you have said, quote, we don't expect it to happen, end of quote. Oh. Premier, why are you trying to influence the OPP investigation by saying that you don't think the OPP will lay charges? Yeah. Yeah. Premier. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, I will say again that I take this matter very seriously, Mr. Speaker, um, that uh, the investigation is happening outside of this House, Mr. Speaker, and I have been clear I have been clear that we need to let that investigation unfold, Mr. Speaker. I would, I would say respectfully to the member opposite, <laughs> the fact that he stands up and asks question after question suggests that he would like to, he would like to uh, investigate the process, investigate the matter in this House, Mr. Speaker. I think that's very order. appropriate when he knows full well that the investigation is member happening. Member from Renfrew, come to order, Mr. Speaker. Do supplementary. Yeah, Premier. <clears throat> Premier, when asked about former Deputy Education Minister. Ben Levins, you said, this is a case that is before the courts. I cannot comment on any of the aspects of the case, end of quote. When asked about the OPP investigation into deleted gas plant documents, you said, quote, unfortunately, I'm not able to comment further. Premier, why do you now feel that it is acceptable for you to comment on this particular OPP investigation into the bribery scandal? Thank you. Well, Mr. Speaker, it's just, it is, it is beyond rich, Mr. Speaker, that the member opposite and, quite frankly, uh, both parties, Mr. Speaker, want commentary on every single aspect of this matter, Mr. Speaker. I have. I have said over and over again that this investigation is happening outside of this House, Mr. Speaker, and I have been Speaker, to order. Second I made a statement two Fridays ago about uh, my position, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. I said what I believed was the case, Mr. Speaker, and I, I will uh, stand by that, but the investigation is happening outside of this House, not, well, not Mr. Speaker, in this legislature during question period. Thank you. Final supplementary. Premier, as the chief executive of this province, your words hold a lot of weight and your actions even more so. It's unethical for you to share your thoughts with law enforcement officials about how you expect their independent investigation to play out. Premier, when you said you didn't expect charges against Pat Severa, you crossed the line. Mm -hmm. and so I ask you, why did you feel it was appropriate to deviate from your standard no comment position and actually profess an opinion on whether charges will be laid against your deputy chief of staff. Is Why is this cr criminal investigation any different than any of the others? She's instructing yes. Mr. Speaker, again, the member opposite and uh, his colleagues have asked questions over and over again that, to which they claim they want answers, Mr. Speaker. I have done my utmost to say what I believe, Mr. Speaker, uh, to talk about my position, Mr. Speaker, and to then say, and I will say this repeatedly, there is an investigation going on, Mr. Speaker. It's happening outside of this House. It is not the business of this legislature to, uh, to undertake that investigation. It is happening independent of this legislature, Mr. Speaker. And I think the member opposite knows that, and yet he continues to ask questions, Mr. Speaker, that, uh, that suggest that he, uh, he's not respecting the fact that this investigation is happening outside the legislature. Thank you. Any questions? The leader of the third party. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. The Premier has been asked who gave Pat Sorbera and Jerry Lougheed their instructions. She will Member from Beaches, East York, come to order. The Premier has been asked for any evidence of her version of the Sudbury bribery scandal. She doesn't have any. It speaks volumes that the Premier keeps ducking these questions, Speaker. Does she have anything to back up her story? Thank you. Premier. Well, again, Mr. Speaker, I have, uh, I have said repeatedly I take this very seriously. I made a statement two Fridays ago, Mr. Speaker, that is in the public realm, uh, and I, uh, I've been very, very clear, Mr. Speaker, that I will continue to cooperate fully with the authorities, as, uh, as will uh, Pat Cerbera, Mr. Speaker, and that that investigation is happening outside of this legislature, That's not here in the House, belongs. Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, the Premier's newest MPP was asked what he thought about the Olivier calls from Sorbera and Lougheed. He said those calls were, quote, a negotiation. Federal prosecutors say, quote, it is a crime to negotiate in any way about an appointment to any public office or government job. Jerry Lougheed thought he was negotiating to get Andrew Olivier out of the way. Pat Cerbera was negotiating. Even the Premier's candidate called this a negotiation. So whose version is correct, the Premier's or her member for Sudbury's? Mr. Speaker, we are not. 
holding the investigation in this legislature. And I just want to say again how pleased I am that Glenn Tebow is our uh, member for Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. Um, and he, he, like all of us, Mr. Speaker, when we're asked a question, we uh, we attempt to answer it, Mr. Speaker. But on this, the fact is that the investigation that both the leader of the uh, the interim leader of the opposition and the leader of the third party want so desperately to happen inside this legislature actually is happening independent of the legislature, Mr. Speaker, outside of this house where it belongs. Thank you. Final supplementary. Well, Speaker, let's review. The Premier said that the appointment was a done deal, but Andrew Olivier told police investigators that Glenn Thibault was still hoping uh, that he would be nominated, uh, holding out hope that he would be nominated. He told Olivier, quote, he was not looking to take the appointment, unquote. So I go back to the same question again, Speaker, to the Premier. Whose version is correct? The Premier's version or the member for Sudbury's version, Speaker? Well, again, Mr. Speaker, I think it's very important that we put our trust in the authorities to uh, to ask the questions of all of the people that they choose to ask questions of, Mr. Speaker, and to conduct the in the uh, investigation Order, outside of this legislature. It's not for this House to uh, to do that, Mr. Speaker. It's not for this House to determine what the questions would be and who would ask them, Mr. Speaker. And so we're going to let the investigation, which is independent. To unfold, Mr. Speaker, outside of this House. Thank you, Speaker. My next question is also for the Premier. Jerry Lougheed says uh, that the Premier didn't want to make an appointment because she wanted a nomination process. When did the Premier decide to offer Andrew Olivier uh, a position so that the Premier's chosen candidate could have an uncontested nomination? Thank you, Premier. Oh, Mr. Speaker, the, uh, the leader of the third party is going to try to come at this many, many different ways. She knows full well that I, uh, I made a decision that Glenn Tebow was going to be our candidate in Sudbury, Mr. Speaker, because I truly believed and I continue to believe that Glenn Tebow is a very strong voice for Sudbury and that it's a very good thing that he's here, Mr. Mr. Speaker, sitting in our legislature, Mr. Speaker, because, because he believes that the plan that we are implementing, the plan to invest in people, to invest in their talent and skills, to invest in infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, to make sure that people have uh, security in their retirement, that that's important work, Mr. Speaker, that that's the work that we need to be doing, to have a poverty reduction strategy, Mr. Speaker, to make sure that we do everything we can to help people in this province and to build the province up. That's why Glenn Tebow ran for us, Answer. Mr. Speaker. That's why he's here, and we're very, very happy that he is with us on this side of the House. Well, Speaker, who told Jerry Lougheed and who told Pat Cerbera to offer Andrew Olivier a job? Senior. Speaker. There is an investigation happening outside of this House. That's where it belongs. It's independent, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Public Prosecution Service of Canada has been retained, Mr. Speaker. It is an independent process, and we are going to let that process unfold outside of the legislature. Speaker, apparently Jerry Lougheed did not know there would be no nomination. Pat Cerbera apparently did not know there would be no nomination. Andrew Olivier apparently did not know there would be no nomination. So who did the Premier tell, Speaker, other than her soul, that there would be no nomination? Once again, Mr. Speaker, I've made it clear that I had made a decision that uh, uh, that Glenn Tebow was going to be our candidate in uh, in Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. He's a fine, fine voice for the people of Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. We're very glad to have him here, and the investigation that is taking place is taking place outside of this house, Mr. Speaker. Whatever the leader of the third party desires, it's taking place outside of this house, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Your question, the from the Thanks, uh, Speaker. My question is to, to the Premier. Premier, you've said I will fully cooperate with the authorities. You've said you will continue to work with the authorities. Working and cooperating with the authorities shouldn't include publicly stating your expected outcome of the case. I thought you always said it was not appropriate to comment on open cases. Premier, aside from your public statements, have you and your lawyers talked to the OPP regarding the alleged bribery case? Premier. Mr. Speaker, you know, I 
was very, very upfront and uh, open. Two Fridays ago, I made a statement, Mr. Speaker, uh, about my position, Mr. Speaker. I said that the uh, the investigation was going to take place. It would take place outside of the legislature, and that we would that we would uh, cooperate with uh, with all of the authorities, Mr. Speaker. That remains my position, Mr. Speaker. But. Did I have a position? Absolutely. My position was that Glenn Tebow would be the uh, the best candidate for uh, for the Liberals in Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. And I think I think the people of Sudbury have spoken. They made a decision. We're very happy to have Glenn Tebow with us here at Prince Park. Thanks, uh, Speaker. Back to the Premier. Premier, you you have said the duties of the Deputy Chief of Staff in your office are separate from the ongoing investigation. I would say the investigation is actually in your office because both you and Ms. Sorbera have been asked to sit down with OPP investigators. Premier, have either of those interviews taken place and did they take place at Queen's Park? Mr. Premier? Speaker, I've been very clear that I and my staff will cooperate fully with the authorities. That is what we will continue to do, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. New question. James Bay. My question is to the Premier. The Premier has insisted for some weeks now that she decided last November to appoint her candidate for the Sudbury by-election. For weeks now, New Democrats have asked over and over evidence to back up her claim. Now, Section 11.8 of the Ontario Liberal Party Constitution says the Liberal leader can appoint a candidate over any objection, but it goes on to say the leader shall communicate his or her intention to make such an appointment as soon as possible and in writing to the nomination commissioner and to the president of the constituency association. Can the premier provide this house with a copy of the letter she sent to both the nomination commissioner of her party and the president of the Sudbury Riding Association? Well, Mr. Speaker, as I have said, <laughs> as I have said, there is an investigation that is going on outside of this house, Mr. Speaker. The member for Timmins James Bay is not. Order. Order. The member for Timmins James Bay, to the best of my knowledge, is not part of that investigative process, Mr. Speaker. It is independent of this house, and it will take place outside of this legislature, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. The, pu the public has a right to the evidence, as this assembly does. So my question is, Bill Nurmi, the head of the local riding association, told the Sudbury Star that it wasn't until Monday, December 15th, that he learned the Liberal plan to appoint your choice candidate. So clearly he had not received a letter from you till sometime after December 15th. When did the Premier send Bill Newmey, then president of the Sudbury Riding Association, a letter advising him of your decision to point your hand-picked candidate? Thank you, Premier. Deputy Premier. Deputy Speaker, so, so I think this may be the first time that uh, the Liberal Party constitution has formed the foundation of a question from the NDP. We in the Liberal Party, Speaker, have uh, annual general meetings where we debate constitutional changes. The members of the Ontario Liberal Party have decided that the leader ought to have the power to appoint, Speaker, unlike in the NDP Party, Speaker. And I think that uh, the experience in Scarborough Guildwood demonstrated that sometimes the right thing to do for everyone is to be clear about who you want your candidate to be, to appoint that candidate, rather than go through a sham process as existed in Scarborough Guildwood, Speaker. Thank you. Your question, the member from Scarborough, Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Education. Good minister. Minister, Great as a minister. former public health nurse and as a public school trustee in the City of Toronto, I know the importance of delivering evidence-based health and physical education curriculum. Absolutely. Minister, last week you released an updated health and physical education curriculum, and it was what, the one reason for developing this new curriculum is to keep our children healthy and safe. It is the most consulted piece of curriculum in Ontario history, yet there are some who continue to make false claims about the yeah, curriculum and what it entails. 
last week, Mr. Speaker, the Conservative member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke, Ms. Gallant, brought the debate to a new low. She stated in the House of Commons that the new curriculum was, quote, groom children for exploitation, end of quote, oh. and was written with the intent to harm children. Mr. Speaker, through you to the minister, Question. can you please explain to the House how the updated health and physical education curriculum will keep our children healthy and safe? Thank you, Speaker, and I'd like to thank the member from Scar uh, Scarborough Agent Court for the question. Uh, first off, the statements made by Cheryl Gallant, the Conservative Ontario MP, are false and misleading and should be condemned by every member of this House. The health and phys ed curriculum is dangerously out of date and needs to be updated. It is the most consulted piece of curriculum in Ontario history. The federal Conservatives irresponsible comments should be especially condemned by the official opposition who are in complete disarray over their position on Ontario's updated curriculum. As I said last week, the PC Answer. education curriculum says one thing, and we have all re three leadership campaign uh, saying the opposite thing. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the minister for the response. As a former public health nurse in the city, former city of Toronto, I see firsthand about the importance of delivering current and relevant physical health education curriculum. Having taught the course called Changing Me for a number of years, I heard many diverse sexuality questions from young children as young as grade three. Mr. Speaker, there would be a lot of misinformation out there the about the new revised health and physical health education curriculum. Again, Ms. Galamp, MP, MP, said, if withdrawal of this liberal policy can prevent one child from being groomed of exploitation, it must really be withdrawn. End of quote. Mr. Speaker, through you to the minister, can she please explain to the House how the updated curriculum is one of the most consulted curriculum in the history of Ontario? Question. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you Speaker. And I'd like to thank the member for her advocacy on behalf of students who need accurate, up-to-date information. This is the most consulted curriculum in the Ontario uh, history. Consultations involve parents, teachers, medical and health professionals, and students themselves. We consulted with parents in every corner of the province. Approximately 4,000 parents wow, were given 4, an opportunity parents. to provide their input. A parent in every elementary school across Ontario and from all four publicly funded school boards was provided with an opportunity to provide input. Our government's top priority is the health and safety of our children, and we heard from parents, teachers, students, and organizations that there is a need for an updated curriculum, which provides Answer. accurate information. Parents understand this, Speaker, and it's why Cheryl Gallant's statements, statements that, frankly, I think are disgusting, should be condemned by every my question is uh, for the Premier. Uh, Premier, last week we learned that Jerry Lougheed has raised over $100,000. I'm, I'm doing it. Come to order. <laughs> Member, last continue. Week, Jerry Lougheed has raised over $100,000 for Justin Trudeau and your federal cousins. Now, since this Sudbury bribery scandal broke, the federal Liberals have cut them loose, but they're keeping the money. It is clear that Liberals will take money no matter who raises it. Premier, will you tell us how much money Jerry Lloyd has raised for the provincial Liberals, and if you have any intent of returning any of that ill-gotten gain? Now, Mr. Speaker. Hope sprang eternal. I thought that the member for Renfrew Nip St. Pembroke was going to stand up and uh, and and distance, distance himself from the comments of his uh, federal riding mate, Mr. Speaker. He just sprang up out of his seat, and I thought that's what was going to happen, which would have been a laudable thing for him to do, Mr. Speaker, because the comments of his uh, federal counterpart were truly beneath the beneath the dignity of uh, a member of the House of Commons, Mr. Speaker. 
Again, Mr. Speaker, I, uh, I will say that the, uh, the matter uh, that the member is referencing is, is part of an investigation that's happening outside of this House, Mr. Speaker, and we're going to let that investigation unfold. Thank you. Supplementary. Premier, perhaps you're so adamantly defending Jerry Lawhe because he's worth more to you driving the bus than being put under it. <laughs> Premier, if you refuse to give numbers about how much Jerry Lawhe has poured into your party coffers, perhaps you can answer this. Don't your actions of defending a Liberal bagman under criminal investigation clearly show that your party and you, are, you as a leader are willing to put their own self-economic interests ahead of the people of Ontario and, in fact, the rule of law? That's what they do. That's what they do. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you. Premier. Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Thank you to the member opposite for the question. Um, and uh, he knows that if he wants to get information about uh, money to the, that is raised, that those uh, the, that information is uh, disclosed publicly, Mr. Speaker, as it is for all of the parties. He can look at he can look at that he can look at that information um, largely, Mr. Speaker, because of the money we brought in about transparency and uh, and the disclosure of information as far as. A member from Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke. Second time. <laughs> It just, just to, uh, to close, Mr. Speaker, I will say that uh, there is an investigation going on. We will cooperate with the authorities, and it's happening outside of this house. Yeah. Thank you. New question, the member for Beverly or Malton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. In 2013, Paul Godfrey, a well-known PC and provincially appointed chair of the OLG, had different ideas on the future of the Ontario gaming industry than Deputy Premier Wynne. House Leader So, on May 16, 2013, the Premier decided to get rid of him and sign an order in council that effectively unappointed Paul Godfrey two years before his contract ended. But Jerry Lawhey Jr., a longtime Liberal and subject of the police investigations, is still a provincially appointed member of the Sudbury Police Board. Will the Premier stop protecting her friends and sign an order to council to take Jerry Lougheed off the Sudbury Police Service Board? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, just for a brief moment, I thought maybe the question we were going in a different direction and it was going to be a question about something else, Mr. Speaker. However, I will say again, Mr. Speaker, that the, uh, the police services boards in this province are responsible in their municipalities for the provision of adequate and uh, effective police services, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. They operate in their municipalities and they operate very well. I have a lot of faith in the police services boards in the province, Mr. Speaker, as I do have faith in the authorities that are undertaking the investigation outside of this legislature, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Supplementary. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Jerry Lougheed is facing not one, but two police investigations for offering Andrew Olivier a job on behalf of the Premier. To get a handpicked to get uh, the nominated candidate out of the way, and yet he is still on the Sudbury Police Services Board. Now we all know the Premier has the power to remove him. She's done so in the past. Will the Premier do the right thing and remove Jerry Lougheed from the Sudbury Police Services Board? Thank you, Attorney General. Attorney General. Merci, Mr. Speaker. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That the uh, Sudbury Police Service Board have, uh, has addressed this issue recently and voted for Monsieur Lahey to retain in, in, uh, his position. And uh, also, I understand that the uh, Sudbury Police Service Board has uh, discussed this, this matter and have contacted the Ontario Civil, Civilian Police Commission. They share their finding and comments from the community member, and the OCPC is uh, proceeding. So uh, let's uh, this uh, process unfold, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. New question, uh, the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Economic Development, Employment and Infrastructure. My constituents in Cambridge and North Dumfries are well aware of the vital role of Ontario's aerospace sector and what it does to our larger economy. Indeed, many of us are employed in these highly skilled jobs. 
In fact, Speaker, chances are that if you're taking off or landing on a plane in Ontario, at least part of that plane's landing gear was manufactured in my community of Cambridge. I'm proud to be a part of a government that's making targeted strategic investments that are strengthening key Ontario industries, like investments in our aerospace industry. Last week, the minister and I were in Cambridge making an announcement in partnership with Aru DevTech, an emerging aerospace manufacturer with new state-of-the-art facilities in Cambridge. Would the minister please inform the House about our government's partnership with Aru DevTech? Thank you. Minister of Economic Development, Infrastructure and Employment. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I want to commend the member, not just for her question, but for the great job she did at that announcement, Mr. Speaker. She really has done a fantastic job in that community. And, and the, the, the news we were able to announce was great news for Cambridge and great news for Ontario's aerospace sector. Harrow DevTech will be investing $54 million in a brand new state of the art aerospace landing gear facility right in Cambridge. That, Mr. Speaker, is 40 new jobs, 50 existing jobs that are going to be supported directly by that, helping to strengthen the 250 core people. And this is what uh, Gilles LeBay, CEO of Hero DevTech, had to say when asked why Cambridge. Number one, the most talented workforce anywhere in North America. Number two, because of the strong partnership with the province of Ontario that helped us beat out Quebec helped us beat out potential American locations. That's Mr. Great. Speaker, we won this contract working as a team, and we're really proud. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you. I'd like to thank the minister for not only his response, but coming to Cambridge to announce this important project Our in my community. Familiar voice. I truly enjoyed my time and tour at Uru DevTech last week. This announcement is part of the larger positive economic trend in my region. To remind the House, the Cambridge-Kitchener-Waterloo region's unemployment rate is 5.7 per cent, well below the national average of 6.6 per cent. In the past year, we have seen the unemployment rate in my region decrease by 0.9 per cent. We've also seen 2,800 new jobs come to Cambridge-Kitchener-Waterloo region in the past year alone. I'm encouraged that Aru DevTech is part of Cambridge's economic momentum. Would the minister please update the House on the status of the aerospace industry in Ontario? Thank you, Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm very pleased to do that because the aerospace sector really is one of the fastest growing sectors anywhere in North America. Uh, Ontario really has become very competitive globally. When it comes to aerospace, the Ontario-Montreal Aerospace Corridor, Corridor has become very globally significant. In fact, Mr. Speaker, our aerospace industry revenues were $5.3 billion in 2013. That's uh, an impact on our GDP of $3 billion. That's very significant. It, it employs close to 17,000 Ontarians, and it's a great exporter. It exports 80 per cent of its finished products. Ontario is home to 14 of the top 25 global aerospace companies. Something that really excites me too, Mr. Speaker, is we're investing in our talent. We've just recently partnered with Centennial Thanks, College, sir. where we're putting forward a great partnership that's producing even better next-generation, state-of-the-art, uh, competitive uh, next-generation workers, Mr. Speaker, something we're Thank very you. proud of. New question, the member from Perry Sound, Ms. Volta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Premier, last week you chose to deflect question after question on your involvement in offering jobs to get your own candidate to step aside in the Sudbury by-election. You keep saying your office has been exonerated, but that's not what the Chief Electoral Officer said. He said, quote, I'm of the opinion that the actions of Jerry Lougheed Jr. and Patricia Sobera amount to apparent contraventions of sec subsection 96.1e of the Election Act. Close quote. Why do you keep insisting your office has been exonerated when the trial hasn't started yet? Thank you. Mary, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the member opposite is not. Uh, reflecting what I have said, Mr. Speaker. What I said, and I've said it repeatedly, is that Elections Ontario determined that the allegations against me and the member for Sudbury were baseless, Mr. Speaker. I've said that over and over again. And then I went on to say, to quote from the Chief Electoral Officer, who said clearly, and I quote, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges, unquote. That is what the Chief Electoral Officer has said, Mr. 
Mr. Speaker, and the Chief Electoral Officer has now passed on the process to the next phase, and we need to let that investigation unfold outside of this House, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, supplementary. Again, to the Premier. So now the police are examining these apparent contraventions of the Election Act, but you seem to be trying to influence their investigation. It would be naive to suggest your comments in the media have no effect on the investigation. So why won't you simply let the Ontario Provincial Police conduct their investigation free of interference? Exactly what I've been saying over and over again. We want the we want the authorities to do their investigation outside of this legislature, Mr. Speaker. And quite frankly, were I to answer every question in detail uh, in this House that had been posed to me by the opposition uh, parties, Mr. Speaker, then that would be inappropriate. And that's why I've said, Mr. Speaker, that the investigation is happening outside of this House. House, we need to let the authorities do their work, Mr. Speaker. Thank you a new question, the member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. We all know Rob Ford's former chief of staff has experienced slashing budgets and cutting services, but he also knows a thing or two about politicians under police investigation. Did the Premier hire the new director of the Liberal Party for his experience cutting budgets and slashing services, or his experience? Public, cutting public services and experience with Project Traveler and Project Brazen 2. Well, Mr. Speaker, I don't see the way in which that is a question of government policy, but Mr. Speaker, let me just say I also think that it is really beneath the dignity of members in this House exactly. to cast dispersions on staff members, Mr. Speaker, who, uh, who are simply trying to do their work, Mr. Speaker. The staff member that the, uh, the member opposite is referencing, Mr. Speaker, has, been, has worked with the Liberal Party for many, many years, Mr. Speaker. He's a man uh, who I respect very much, Mr. Speaker, and he has experience that will, uh, will benefit the Liberal Party of Ontario, and we're very glad to have Earl Provo on board, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Rob Ford cut transit, he cut libraries, he cut environmental programs, he cut parks, he cut social services. Oh, and the police were investigating him too. Earl Provost helped steer the mayor through all of that. Did the Premier hire Rob Ford's chief of staff to help her slash services in Ontario or to help her with the four OPP anti-rackets investigations into the Liberal government of Ontario? Mr. Speaker, the, uh, the member opposite knows full well that her party ran on a platform that would have cut $600 million more, Mr. Speaker, than, uh, than was any part of our fiscal uh, plan, Mr. Speaker. So, again, I say to the member opposite, uh, in the same way that uh, the, uh, the member opposite in her party determines who their staff are going to be, Mr. Speaker, whether it's Jonah Shine, Mr. Speaker, or whether it's Paul Ferreira, people who have been past candidates, Mr. Speaker, we determine on this side when we think there are people who uh, really share our value system, Mr. Speaker, and who understand uh, the organization of the party, and we believe Earl Provo is going to be a very strong asset to the party, Mr. Speaker. New question, the member from Burlington. Merci, Monsieur le Président. My question... Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the minister delegated to Senior affairs. Two million people over the age of 65, and by 2036, that number is projected to more than double. In my riding of Burlington, nearly one in five citizens is a senior, and issues rel related to their safety and well being are ones of common interest and concern. As the number of seniors in our society grows, the number of seniors reporting incidents of abuse is also at risk of increasing. In fact, research has found that between 4 and 10 percent of seniors may experience some form of abuse from someone in a position of authority or trust at some point in their later years. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to commend the minister for his continued work in fighting for the safety and dignity of older adults in our province. Would the minister please inform this legislature of the steps our government is taking in order to ensure that seniors in our province are safe Question. and protected? Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Speaker. Minister responsible for seniors. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker, and uh, merci beaucoup pour, uh, uh, et... Thank you very much for this excellent question. It's perfect for today. How about we? Uh, certain uh, Speaker, I'm very proud indeed that we were the first government in Canada to introduce a strategy to combat elder abuse, establishing a zero-tolerance policy as well. 
Speaker, since 2003, we invested more than $9 million in elder abuse prevention and awareness programs. Um, I have to say, Speaker, as well, that uh, as of the uh, result of the 2010 Retirement Home uh, Authority, retirement homes are now required to take uh, a number of unprecedented steps to protect our seniors. They must, among many other things, obtain a license and post the Seniors' Bill of Rights. Answer. Mr. Speaker, elder abuse, it's not acceptable, it's not controlled, it's not tolerated, and it must stop. Thank it you. is our government, Speaker, and it's our goal. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank the minister for his response. Speaker, it's great to hear how committed our government is to supporting our grow growing seniors' population, especially when it comes to their safety. That is why, Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to hear of all the initiatives our government is taking towards ensuring the safety and well-being of my senior constituents. In a recent visit to my riding, the minister had the opportunity to visit our dynamic senior centre and meet with seniors in our community, in addition to those working to ensure their well-being. And last year, I was pleased to host a roundtable on seniors' issues that included caregivers and members of our law enforcement community. Speaker, one of the great initiatives that's being developed and is developed, in fact, now is the OPP's province-wide Seniors Crime Stoppers Initiative, an interactive and bilingual DVD for presentations to seniors on topics such as fraud, elder abuse, and neglect. Question. This is now utilized by local Crime Stoppers programs across our province. Minister, could you please expand on the ways in which we are continuing to safeguard Ontario's Thank seniors? Thank you. Senior, uh, no. Minister. Thank, thanks again, Speaker, and merci pour votre question. Thank you for your question. Indeed, uh, the member is a very passionate member speaking on behalf of her seniors, and we are working tireless and passionately to create a secure and supportive environment for seniors, and we know it is only through education, uh, training, collaboration, and coordination of services that we will make this goal indeed a reality. Speaker, our elderly abuse strategy has three particular parts coordination of community services, training and frontline staff and workers, and public education to raise awareness. Speaker, our own Ontario Provincial Police has a mandatory training program on elder abuse for some 5,200 of its forces. We also provide some $50,000, Speaker, to the National Initiative of the, uh, for the Care Answer. of the Elderly to gather more data. Let me say, Speaker, that we, in, as a government in Ontario, we care for our seniors and we strive to provide, Thank you. To provide the best living environment. Thank you. New question, the member from Perth, Wellington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Premier, I have received a number of phone calls and emails from my constituents who are fed up with your government scandals. They are outraged by your government's actions during the Sudbury by-election and have asked that you and your party be held accountable for what happened. Premier, how do you expect any of us to trust you when it made it clear that no one will be held accountable for what happened in Sudbury? Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, um, as I have said, as I have said repeatedly, there is an investigation going on, Mr. Speaker. The authorities are uh, the, th the authorities are doing what they need to do to uh, to complete an investigation. So, in fact, Mr. Speaker, that's a process that I hope the member opposite would uh, point his constituents to to make sure that they understand that there there is an investigation going on, that it's not happening in this house, Mr. Speaker, but it's happening with people who actually have the responsibility for that work. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Yes, I do point that out to my constituents. I tell them there's four investigations going on, not just one. Speaker, this government is now under its fourth OPP investigation. There is no excuse for that, though they've certainly tried one, every one in the book. It's time for the Premier to stop putting political gain ahead of what's doing right. Premier, will you take the first step in rebuilding the trust you've lost and demand that those who are responsible for this mess step down from their public duties? Mr. Speaker, I've been clear. I've been clear that uh, um, we will cooperate with the authorities. The investigation is taking place outside of this house. I made a public statement two Fridays ago, Mr. Speaker. Um, I, uh, I made it clear that uh, Pat Cerbera, if there are charges, uh, will step aside, Mr. Speaker. The uh, Police Services Board is an independent uh, body, Mr. Speaker, and the authorities are uh, undertaking an investigation outside of this legislature. Thank you. New question, Member from Niagara Falls. 
Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. Justin, from the TSN Trade Centre, Premier, in light of all the draft picks being traded in the NHL today, can you confirm Andrew Olivier was given one job offer and future consideration in exchange for a Liberal nomination in Sudbury? Yeah. Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, it was at least an, an interesting preamble, um, but Mr. Speaker, again, I have, uh, I have said repeatedly that uh, there's an investigation happening. It's happening outside of this House, not in the legislature, and we're going to let the authorities do their work, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Premier, when was the decision made to offer a job to Andrew Olivier? When was it? Thank you, Premier. Mr. Speaker, there is an investigation happening. It's happening outside of this House. I have been, uh, I've been clear that we will work with the authorities. I made a statement two Fridays ago, Mr. Speaker. We're going to let that investigation unfold. Thank you. New question. The member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the President of the Treasury Board. Wow. Hey. <laughs> Minister, youth unemployment has been a challenge in our province over the past few years, and I know that this is an issue that concerns the constituents in my riding of Kitchener Centre. And I thank you very much for visiting my riding last Friday, where you spent uh, many hours listening to stakeholders who shared their concerns with you. Now, making sure that graduates and young professionals have the tools that they need to succeed is very important. It ensures a strong workforce and a strong economy. I recall last year that the Ontario Public Service was chosen as one of Canada's top employers for young people, and that's for the second year in a row. We know that the OPS has a strong record of supporting the professional development of young Ontarians. Mr. Question. Speaker, can the minister please explain to this House the ways in which the OPS has made youth employment a priority? Thank you, President of the Treasury Board. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the member from Kitchener Centre for uh, the question and also for hosting me at a very interesting day of meeting with stakeholders on Friday, Speaker. The Ontario Public Service does indeed have a strong record in providing employment programs to students, recent graduates, at risk youth, and internationally trained young professionals across the province. Ontario's employment programs for youth and new professionals promote the OPS as an employer of first choice and help to revitalize the aging workforce. In 2013-14, the OPS provided close to 6,000 paid employment experiences for youth and new professionals, including 5,200 positions for summer students in ministries and community agencies. These initiatives demonstrate our commitment to youth employment Answer. and training the next generation for important responsibilities in government. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thanks to the minister for her answer. And I did hear a comment from the other side of the House about where the meetings took place. Three of our meetings that day were in Kitchener Centre, for the record. Now, I know that families in my riding and across the province, for that matter, do appreciate the opportunities being made available to young people by the Ontario Public Service. We've all heard time and again about the challenges that young people face while they're looking for a good summer job and then after graduation, what it's like trying to find meaningful employment. So I'm pleased to hear that the OPS offers so many opportunities for young people to develop their professional skills and to build their resumes. Minister, can you please give this House and my constituents in Kitchener Centre more insights on the employment programs that the Ontario Public Service offers to young Question. people? Thank you, Speaker. I welcome the opportunity to speak about some of these programs, and I'm sure members on all sides of the House will want to know about this uh, to support their constituents. The Ontario Internship Program hires recent graduates into occupational areas in which current and future skill shortages have been identified. Newcomers to Canada have an opportunity to gain Canadian work experience through the paid OPS Internship Program for internationally trained individuals and the OPS Internship for Internationally Trained Engineers. The OPS Learn and Work program continues to provide work experience for up to 140 at-risk youth uh, per year in priority communities across Ontario. 
Through that program, high school students are able to earn credits toward their diploma. Answer. For young people across the province, employment experience programs help ensure they develop the skills they need to lead to successful careers. Thank you. New question. Member from Huron, Bruce. Thank you very much, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Premier, your Deputy Chief of Staff, Pat Sabera, used the following quote in her online biography, never retreat, never explain, never apologize, get the thing done and let them howl. Unfortunately, she's taken that a step too far in the Sudbury by-election. In fact, it reflects her lack of political ethics. Now she's under OPP investigation for bribery. Premier, will you continue to let Pat Sabera never explain and never apologize and continue to retreat instead of demanding her to step down during this criminal investigation? Well, Mr. Speaker, and I know the member opposite understands that that quote is uh, from Nellie yeah, McClung, who, uh, quite frankly, is a, a, I think a role model for all women who have uh, who have worked to get into positions of influence that have traditionally been positions held by men, Mr. Speaker. And I think that I think that we can all respect the heritage of someone like Nellie McClung, and that she worked so hard, and that she didn't back down, Mr. Speaker, and that she fought for her place in the politics of this country and in this province, Mr. Speaker. I have a great respect for the work that Nellie McClung did. And Pat Cervera, Mr. Speaker, is a woman who understands that, uh, that that history, that history of our democracy includes not respecting the position of women and that that's something that we need to fight for and continue to fight for, Mr. Speaker. Crusader, please. And I would ask some members to have their dialogues while question and answer period is going on just to carry it somewhere else. Supplementary. Thank you. Back to the Premier. I always respect the role of women in politics at every level, but Premier, what I can't respect is the legacy that Pat Sabera is casting upon your entire government. In fact, I, I find Sabera's online bravado absolutely outrageous because she's just taking it too far. Currently, your sorry government is under OPP investigation, as we know, for four separate incidents. You definitely have made pre history, Premier, as one of the—let me repeat that. You have made history, Premier, as sadly, as one of the most criminally investigated governments in Ontario. Congratulations. There's really only one way to go from here. Redeem yourself, take the high road, Walk the shoes, walk the path Nellie McClung has developed and, and led on. Integrity is long overdue from your leadership. Question. Will you be a Premier and tell Sabera to resign today? Thank you. Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, I, uh, I will continue to work in the best interest of the people of this province. You know, the work that we're doing, Mr. Speaker, whether it's uh, the job opportunities that are being provided for young people, our Minister of Children and Youth Services commented that her very first summer job was a Government of Ontario job, Mr. Speaker. That's extremely important work. There are young people today who are thinking about what they are going to do in the summer, and those summer jobs will start to inform their career paths and their lives going forward. That's extremely important work, Mr. Speaker, and those investments are critical. And In fact, we're developing new programs. The, uh, the uh, Youth Employment Fund, Mr. Speaker, that we put in place has helped 30,000 young people to find placement in uh, a job, Mr. Speaker, that has, in 80 percent of the cases, led to a permanent job, Mr. Speaker. So that work, that is critical. That's why we're in government, Mr. Speaker. That's the plan that we're implementing, and I, I hope that the member opposite uh, can work with us on those very Thank you. New question, the member from Timmins, James Bay. My question is to the Premier. Earlier, your Democrats asked you the question, when did you send the letter, as per your constitution, both to your nominating commissioner and to Bill Nurmi, the president of the Riding Association? It's clear from the public record that the Riding Association president didn't find member out from Oxford will come to order. after December the 15th. So I ask Deputy. you again. When did you send the letter to the nomination commissioner or to the president of the Riding Association that you would be not following a nomination process? My colleagues and I welcome the member opposite to come and join our party and be part of our, be part of our AGN, Mr. Speaker, and vote on our policies. And likewise, Mr. Speaker, if he'd like to bring the NDP 
NDP constitution, Mr. Speaker, because <laughs> we'd be happy to give them some advice, Mr. Speaker, on running real nominations as opposed to sham nominations, Mr. Speaker. The fact is, the fact is, Mr. Speaker, there is an investigation going on about a specific situation in Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. We're going to let that, we're going to let that end investigation unfold. We're not going to do that in this House, Mr. Speaker. It's an independent process. We're going to leave it as an independent process. Thank you. Supplementary. Again, to the Premier, you refuse to answer the question. The question is a very simple one. According to your constitution, the leader of the party has to send a letter at some time to both the Riding Association President and the Nomination Commissioner of the Liberal Party. I ask you again, when did you send that letter and when will you make it public? Again, Mr. Speaker, my colleagues are, are talking about Adam Giambroni and what kind of letters he got, Mr. Speaker, and the, the candidate who was uh, right. there, Mr. Speaker. I don't have the answers to those questions, Mr. Speaker, but what I know is that there is an investigation going on into the matter in, uh, in Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. That investigation is independent. It's happening outside of this House, and we will cooperate with the authorities, but we need to let that investigation happen outside of this House. Thank you. New question. The member from Mississauga Streetsville. Well, thank you very much, Speaker. I thought I would try something a little different here. My question is to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Oh. Speaker, it's hard to think of the province of Ontario without our Great Lakes. We use them for drinking water, we use them for food, we use them for electricity, for transportation, for recreation. In fact, including my home city of Mississauga and, of course, our sister city of Brampton, some 80 per cent of Ontarians get their drinking water from the Great Lakes. Everyone has got uh, memories that they have of being out on the Great Lakes, enjoying sailing in the summer, fishing all round, um, and they're not the only ones. The Great Lakes are a, a commercial uh, entity as well. Our Great Lakes fisheries are worth some $200 million annually. And as a whole, Ontario's Great Lakes Basin contained 40 per cent of Canada's economic activity. Now, Minister, studies have been showing that Question. population growth, chemicals, invasive species, and so on are changing the Great Lakes. Would the minister please inform the House on the actions that our government Thank has you. taken to protect the Great Lakes? Minister of the Environment. Thank, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. You know, and this is one of the matters that Ontarians actually do care about and want to hear questions about in this. I, yeah. I was just uh, I was talking with, with with my friend from Mississauga Streetsville and my friend from Ottawa Orleans, because we're getting a lot of letters from young kids about microbeads in, in our about um, invasive species, pharmaceuticals. Ontarians are very concerned about the future of our, one of our most visible and important resources and, and really want the government to act. I think want the opposition to hold the government accountable for acting on this, which is why we have presented this very, very important piece of legislation that will enable communities, First Nations, farmers, businesses, environmental and labour groups to come together to protect our Great Lakes and to Answer. establish plans that can be implemented locally. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Thank you. Supplementary. Well, Minister, you make a good point on uh, how important the Great Lakes are to our ecosystem, to our economy, and to our well-being as Ontarians. Protecting those Great Lakes and the St. Lawrence River Basin is going to enhance the quality of life for all Ontario families, and more importantly, to assure a dynamic green economy for future generations. Now, Minister, this is the third time Ontario has introduced a proposed Great Lakes Protection Act in this legislature. Members, all members on all sides will recognize the importance of strong action to support the Great Lakes, which keep our economy competitive and they're so important to each and every one of us. This House, all of us, would like to know how the proposed Great Lakes Act has been strengthened from Question. previous versions. Minister, would you please talk to the House about how the proposed Great Lakes Protection Act will keep our Great Lakes strong and vibrant now and for future Thank generations? You. Mr. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this bill has been around for a long time. One could call it the Jurassic Park of legislation, but I, I know the, uh, the member from Mississauga Streetsville knows the Great Lakes have been around for more than 6,000 years. And, uh, um, so it's, it's always important when you're talking about the Great Lakes and pollution, we, we actually understand uh, the importance of science in these particular kinds of things. because. Uh, um, the government actually has over 221 projects in local communities in all all parties, uh, constituencies, Mr. Speaker, that are leading uh, in best practices, including up our lakes and creating economic opportunities from them. We have committed to $15 million a year, uh, and I hope all members of the legislature will vote for this bill once this bill Answer. is forward. The Guardian Steward Council uh, will then have access to funds, as will all members, and I would encourage every member to talk to your local communities to take advantage of this government Thank initiative, because that's where the best solutions come Good from. Question. Member from Leeds Grenville. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, my question is back to the Premier. Premier, earlier in question period today, I asked you two very simple questions. You talked about participating and cooperating with the authorities. I would like to know, and I think Ontarians would like to know, have you or your lawyers met with the OPP? When did you meet with them? And did Order. you meet with them here at Queen's Park? Thank you. Speaker, I think what is important is that the people of Ontario know that there is an investigation going on, that it's happening outside of this house, and that I and my staff will cooperate fully with the authorities, Mr. Speaker. I think that's very, very important. I have said that over and over again. I said it publicly in my statement two Fridays ago, Mr. Speaker, and I will continue to say it in this house in answer to questions. There is an investigation going on. It is not happening in this house. I will and my staff will cooperate fully with the authorities, Mr. Speaker, and we need to let that investigation investigation unfold. Thank you. Supplementary. Well, Premier, again, I was at your press conference a couple of Fridays ago, and clearly you inserted yourself into the investigation with your comments. It's a very simple question, Premier. Have you met with the OPP? Yes or no? Did you meet with them here? Yes or no? It's a simple question. Yeah, Answer the question. Thank you. What's Thank you. interesting, Mr. Speaker, is on the one hand, the uh, member opposite seems to think that it was inappropriate for me to make a statement publicly, and on the other hand, the member opposite wants me to answer more questions, and he wants me to answer questions of detail about the, author about the investigation, Mr. Speaker. I'm not going to do that. The fact is there is an investigation going on. We will co cooperate fully with the authorities, Mr. Speaker. That investigation is not happening in question period. It's not happening in this legislature. It's happening outside the House, and we will let it unfold. As as it should, Mr. The Attorney General on a point of order. Yes, Mr. Speaker. In my answer to the leader of the official opposition, I said the OCPC shared their fi findings and comments. It's the Sudbury Police Service Board that shared their comments. Did you mention Laurie? I want to correct my record. Thank you. That's a point of order. People are allowed to uh, correct their record. Uh, the member from Bramley Gormalton on a point of order. Mr. Speaker, my question I mentioned the nominated candidate, candidate, I meant to say the previously nominated candidate, Andrew Olivier. Uh, Thank you. There are no deferred votes. This House stands recessed until 1 p.m. this afternoon.